Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Dubois and I'm a research scientist at Northeastern University. I will now present a joint work with Imperial College London, which focuses on characterizing the activations of IoT smart speakers. Probably many of you have a smart speaker at home. They are internet connected and voice control devices that are powered by voice assistant, which are cloud services that are provided by Google, for example, like Google Assistant, or Amazon Alexa, or Apple Siri, or Microsoft Cortana, which are the devices that we will focus on in this study. They are very useful, but they carry a potential privacy cost. The first is that these devices have a microphone that is constantly recording, waiting for a wake word. Also, they have the capability to send recordings of the internet, which carries some risk. But what happens if the wake word is misunderstood? For example, you say, I like the time you spend together, but the smart speakers understand instead of I like the, understands Alexa. And then it even starts answering, like saying the time is 10 a.m. So this misunderstanding is what we call a misactivation. And when that happens, usually the smart speaker, they signal the activation by lighting up, but they also send a recording to the voice assistant cloud service and the cloud service may store the recording and process it to produce an answer. We have seen many articles in the press where workers of some companies were able to listen to the recording of the users, or also some devices were recording all the time when they should not. The goal of this work is to understand when the smart speakers start recording without the wake word being spoken. We call this misactivations, and we are in particular interested in knowing how frequently they, ha they happen or if they are signaled in some way with, for example, the LED, if they adapt from a misactivation to the next, if that misactivation is long enough to get the content of a conversation, if they have any biases based on who is speaking, and if there are any secret wake words that are not documented, and if there are any differences in the region, for example, devices in the US might behave different from the one in the UK. The challenges to answer this question is first to understand how we can expose the smart speakers to some content. The answer is that we can just play popular TV shows from Netflix and see what happens. The second challenge is that how can we detect when a device is activating? Most, all the devices usually have an LED, so we can just look at that to see if it's activating, but also they provide, some of them provide a cloud service so where we can download the list of these activations. And also all of them are connected to the internet and they need to use the internet to send the recording. So we can just look at the network traffic and see if we see any evidence of misactivation of activation. How can we distinguish when the device activates correctly from when it doesn't? The idea is that we look at the closed captions and we compare the closed caption with the wake word that the device expects. If we don't find the word, then the device is misactivating. To test the devices, we built a test environment that is composed of a coordinating server and a testing cabinet. The testing cabinet contains all the devices under test from Apple, Microsoft, Google, and Amazon. The coordinate server can receive like a camera feed from a camera that is inside a cabinet that we use to detect visual activations. Also, the coordinate server is responsible for playing the audio content using the loudspeakers that are inside the cabinet. It also provides a Wi-Fi network and acts as a router so that it can capture all the traffic that the devices are producing. We replicated this test environment in the United States and in the United Kingdom so that we can analyze the regional differences. To select the content, we have chosen 12 popular TV shows across multiple categories. So we wanted to cover many categories and many other characteristics like the words per minute. So in total, we have 143 hours of, of video that is played or 1 million words in total. One important thing is that we want the closed captions available because that's what we use to detect these activations. To prepare the devices for the experiments, we have to 
we had to reset them to factory settings and set them up using new cloud accounts. Then when we start the experiments, we have three phases. The first is the initialization phase where we just disconnect the power from the device and reconnect and then wait some time until the device boots. Then we start playing the content and we also start recording the traffic from the network and also the camera feed. We keep recording until the episode is over, is over and then when it's over, we stop the recording and we label the captured data so that we can analyze that. We repeat this for every episode and then we repeat it again for all the episodes a second time for each lab so that we have like more data for the same content. When we detect misactivations, we also collect the, the time when the misactivation happens and we play again that the part of content so that we can see if the misactivations are consistent. We repeat the experiments 10 more times for each misactivations that we have found. How can we detect activations? Well, the first, as I said before, we use the camera. And using the camera means that comparing the frame when the camera, when the devices are not activating to a frame when the devices are activating. In this case, you can see that there is an Amazon Echo Dot second generation in the center that is activating. That will change some pixels on the camera that will signal the activation of the device. The second method is to use the network traffic. The idea is to look at spikes in network traffic over a window of 20 seconds. If we see like a spike that is above a, a certain threshold, we consider that an activation. The reason why we do this is that we observe that the background traffic that is in blue in the figure has always spikes that are lower than the activation traffic on the right. So a threshold-based approach works quite well, at least for the Google Home Mini and for the Amazon devices. The third activation method is the cloud. We simply download the information from the Google Assistant Cloud and Amazon Alexa Cloud to detect the, um, the activation. Unfortunately, Apple and Microsoft are not providing cloud access, so we cannot do anything for them. We ran the experiments between November 2019 and February 2020. Since we repeat experiments multiple times, we consider every misactivation that happens in, in the same portion of the content by multiple experiments just once. That's why we focus on distinct misactivations. The default parameters for our experiments is to use the detection from the camera. Since there are no false positives, it's available for all the devices and gives the duration information. And the test bed of reference that we use is the US one, since it has more devices than the UK one. The first question we want to ask is that, how frequently do smart speakers misactivate? If you look at this plot, we can see that number of misactivation that we have found are higher on three devices. That is the Invoke with Cortana, Echo Dot second generation, and Apple HomePod. They have more than 50 misactivations during our experiments, or more than 0 0.95 misactivations per hour. If you look at this picture, you can see there are multiple colors. The yellow colors are for misactivations that only happened once, while darker colors means that the misactivation happened in more experiments. So the yellow one are inconsistent, while the red one are the most consistent ones. You can see that the ones that are not consistent are more frequent than the ones that are consistent. And this means that there is a lot of non-determinism since some misactivations cannot be repeated in multiple experiments. The second question is to understand if the activations are reported by all the signals, that is like the camera, the cloud, and the network. We first compare the camera and the cloud. And the answer here is yes. So if you look at this figure, the yellow part represents the misactivation that are detected by both camera and cloud, while the other colors are only detected by one of them. And we see that there are the lines with the other colors are very short. That means that they are the cloud and the camera are almost perfectly correlated. 
if we consider the camera versus traffic, we can see a similar trend for the Google and the Amazon devices, since the yellow line is very long and the other two are almost invisible. But if we consider the Invoke and the HomePod, we can see that there is some discordance. So the red and the blue appear much longer. This can mean two things. One is that the devices might actually activate and not signal that using the camera. The other is that there might be some measurement problem because the threshold for, for the background traffic and for the activation traffic are very close to each other in these two devices, which creates a bit of false positives and false negatives. So this will require additional investigation to be clarified. The next question is to understand if the devices adapt over time. To answer this question, we try to um, analyze if the experiment, if the misactivations can be repeated by repeating the experiments. If you look at this figure, the dark blue lines represent a trend that is strongly decreasing, meaning that misactivations that were detected before are no longer detected later. While the red that doesn't appear for any device means the opposite. So we see that there is a strong decrease in trend for the Amazon devices, while for the other devices, the, the trend is not very strong. So we don't know, but for the Amazon ones, the trend is quite evident and it's very likely that the devices are building a voice profile of the user, which helps the device reduce misactivations, but also collecting a voice profile of the user might be in violation of some privacy policy, depending on their jurisdiction. The next question is that, do device record an entire conversation or like how long do they record? So of course we don't know what is the duration of a conversation, but we can measure how much they, they misactivate in terms of time. So if you look at this picture, you can see that how the, the duration of misactivations are distributed for each device. What we see is that the devices that misactivate the most, the longest, are the HomePod and the Echo Dot, the second generation. These devices have the median case of misactivation that lasts at least four seconds. That means 50% of the misactivation are four seconds. If we consider only 25 per, the worst 25% of misactivations, we can see that the minimum duration is seven seconds for the HomePod. We consider the rare case of 10% of misactivations, we can see that the duration is 10 seconds for, for the HomePod. And maybe four seconds was not enough to, for, to get a full conversation, but 10 seconds starts to get a bit close to a level where you can grasp at least some of the content of a, of a conversation and to be like a privacy concert. The next question is to understand what words cause the most misactivations. We just look at the closed captions and try to infer some patterns that misactivate. What we've seen are cases, for example, like the Google Assistant that has to like answer okay or hi Google or hey Google. It actually activates when you start a sentence that with a word that rhymes with hey or hi followed by some, a certain set of consonants that are even different from Google. For example, if you say, okay, where were we? This might create a misactivation with Google Assistant, depending on, on the conditions. We've seen patterns for every wake war for all the devices we test. If you are interested to know them, like you can feel free to, to have a look at the paper. But what we learn here is that there is no evidence of a secret wake war. But there is evidence that similar words might trigger the devices. And this can be used, for example, by an attacker to force commands. I will now show an example of light misactivation where the Google Home device is activated in an episode of Bing Bang Theory. The misactivation is the same one of the example that I've shown be before. Enjoy the video. Thank you, Leonard, but actually I can't do it tonight. Uh, how about another time? Okay, great. Thanks, bye. Okay, where were we? 
<laughs> As you've seen, after the um, character said, okay, where were you? We, the device is activated. And this happens in, a, in all the device activations and you can download the video from the paper website if you are more interested. Some other insights for our study is, are smart speakers sensitive to content? We try to answer this question and we have seen that if we consider the number of misactivations by time, that means by um, like amount of time that elapsed, we can see that the West Wing misactivates the most. So in this case, the shows that have the highest density, density per of dialogue, they misactivate more by time. But if we change our criteria and we measure the misactivations like by not by time, but by amount of dialogue, by number of words, then the show that misactivates the most is Narcos that has half of the words per minute compared to the West Wing. We try to look at the closed caption to see why of this happens. And we've seen that the Narcos has the has a lot of dialogue that is in a foreign language, like Spanish, or also with Spanish accent, you can see that hard to understand dialogue tend to misactivate much more than like uh, clearly spoken dialogue. So this means that foreign people might be at additional risk compared to non-foreign people. Another thing we notice is that there are regional dis differences between the US and the UK. Both regions have a very high number of misactivations. But the misactivation are not the same, they are different. We don't know why this happens. Maybe it's because they use different speech recognition models, or maybe they use like um, the, um, the difference of the test environment that we created are, are big enough to um, affect the results of the experiments. And then the last explanation is maybe it's this non-determinism that we've seen in all the other analyses that is actually affecting the results. Which, where for non-determinism, we mean like the misactivations that are not repeatable. Some possible causes for this non-determinism might be due to the noise that is created when, some, when the audio is converted from digital to analog and then from analog to digital by the loudspeaker and by the microphone. Another explanation is that the algorithm may rely on, on the feedback loops or other source of non-determinism, and that's why the output is not the same every time. How can the users protect? The users can protect, well, by turning off the mic when they don't want to be listened, or even jam the device, or do some more hackish solution, like replacing the wake wall recognition engine, or just configuring the device properly by tweaking the wake word settings. Unfortunately, most manufacturers or companies don't allow you to customize the sensitivity or the wake word, but allowing that might help users to reduce the misactivations. Also, companies might be able to eventually to enable um, local processing on their devices so that the, traf the um, activations are not sent over the internet, but they are processed like in the device itself. The fact that these activations produce some traffic that is sent over the internet has some implications for the privacy, especially like from the um, privacy policies point of view. For example, GDPR um, suggests to have data protection by the design but it's it's unclear if having like this unwanted like uh, recordings is compliant with the uh, regulation. We see other privacy laws, for example, BIPA, in which the in which the um, requires explicit content to collect biometric identifiers. But unfortunately, this explicit content may be given by the owner, but not by other people that might be listened. And also the same can happen with children. For example, the Privacy Protection Act requires the parental consent for the children, but what if a child doesn't have the parental consent because in the house of another child that has an Amazon Alexa device? So these are all things that need to be clarified. So in conclusion, this paper is the first analysis of smart speaker behavior at scale. We have more than 536 hours of cumulative playtime, and the good news is that we haven't found any evidence of malicious 
or intentional misactivations. The bad news is that misactivations do happen, they are frequent, and they may last long. Some open question is that we want to investigate what happens in more realistic deployment environments, or how do smart speakers react to nonverbal noises? For example, like a smoke detector, detector going off is supposed to trigger Alexa Guard, for example. And also we want to understand how companies use and share the data that they get from the environment. So we have made all the software data and these activation videos available from the load. And you can see them, you can download them from the website that you see. Thank you for attending my presentation and feel free to ask me any questions.